it is. <laughs> and so. rolling and ready. What made me interested in Duolingo was the mission to make education accessible for everyone. I watched actually one of my coworkers' daughters learn fractions for the first time using our app. Every time I'm working on something and I need inspiration, I think back to watching her learning how to do a fraction very easily using the code that we've written. I think there's very, very few companies where you can say, this is actually good for the world and it's also a good business. The one thing I definitely wanted to not do was the same thing every day. Something that's unique about engineering at Duolingo is you can kind of wear all of the hats that you want to wear. We have a lot of exciting features that now you can interact with talking to a, one of the Duolingo characters. This new thing that we're calling video calls with Lily, using generative AI to have a conversation with Lily and learn from that conversation in real time. We're also using Gen AI a lot behind the scenes to generate the content that powers a lot of our learning features. So I think one of the unique problems that we work on at Duolingo is building really massive learning infrastructure. Uh, I think we are one of the only companies doing it at this scale. There's just so many different problems that we're trying to solve here. We're able to uh, produce features that impact like a ton of users. I rarely hear engineers from my friends or engineering other companies get to own product features from like essentially end-to-end, -end, coming up with the ideas, but also implementing what might be a very large scope. Each engineer like really owns quite a big chunk of the app, and there's just more surface area for things to go wrong. Six months into my time here, I managed to have two giant errors with our new data pipeline. I uh, have crashed the app, uh, I think, twice. <laughs> oh, not that many. Really, really bad. Probably like three, four, five. It's good to know that my manager has twice, so I, I have some black room there. I feel like making mistakes like that isn't seen as like some career-ending horrible mistake. Uh, we do like blameless postmortems. Try to figure out what went wrong and make sure the next time around we don't run into the same problem. It's a rite of passage as a Duolingo software engineer to take the app down. <laughs> There's generally this culture of experimentation. We put a lot of value in exploring new ideas and seeing where they go, even if they're not successful. Everything being run as an A-B experiment allows us to take risks because in the end, it's the data that trumps opinion. So it's like, you can take the risk and if, if, you know, if it doesn't work out, you succeed in the data, you, you're not gonna launch it. When I decided to study computer science, uh, my family was like, yeah, no, don't do it. <laughs> it's a male pill. Coming to Duolingo, I've never felt like I've been treated differently based on my gender. I've only been on teams that were led entirely by women in my entire time here, which is pretty crazy to think about. Duolingo really makes an effort to try to produce these diverse teams. Match some of the diversity of the audience in your employee base, you are much more likely to understand that user base. A lot of us like to say that it's still day one here. There's so much more to accomplish, so much more that we want to do. I'm still here because of the mission. I think it's a perfect cause. If we have a ton of impact. We're just so big now and we can really change people's lives. Uh -huh.